Photons are the packets of energy our eyes detect to see the world around us. And in the bizarre world of quantum mechanics, photons are at the very heart of magnetism. Plunging down to the subatomic level, we can see how atoms are made up of a nucleus surrounded by a cloud of electrons. Think about the structure of an atom. There's a positive charge to the nucleus, and then the electrons have a negative charge. These two attract each other. To explain this attraction, quantum physicists think that both protons and electrons spit out short-lived bursts of photons. Oppositely charged particles absorb each other's light, and this draws the particles together. This attractive force is known as electromagnetism. Atoms themselves would not hold together if it weren't for electromagnetic forces. Electromagnetism also causes atoms to stick together, to create the molecules that form us and everything around us. Electromagnetism is responsible for the very structure of our matter, atoms holding together. Molecular bonds in our bodies, those are bound together by electromagnetic interactions, and therefore they're bound together by light. A universe without electromagnetism would come apart at the seams. Electromagnetism not only holds everything together, it makes things feel solid. When you touch something, that's the electromagnetic force as well. We have electrons in our atoms and they repel each other. And when you try to touch something, those forces keep you from actually physically touching it. The reason I don't fall through the floor is not that the floor is particularly solid. Most of the floor is empty space. It's the electric forces of the atoms in the floor against the electric forces of the atoms in my body that hold me up. Just those little forces of those few atoms are enough to hold me up against the entire gravitational force of the Earth. Electromagnetism rules. So, as you sit watching TV, not only are there visible light waves from the TV striking your eyes, but also radio waves transmitting from a nearby station, and microwaves carrying cell phone calls and text messages, and waves from your neighbor's Wi-Fi, and GPS units in the cars driving by. There is a chaos of waves from all across the spectrum passing through your room right now. With all these waves around you, how can you possibly watch your TV show? Similar to tuning a radio to a specific radio station, our eyes are tuned to a specific region of the EM spectrum and can detect energy with wavelengths from 400 to 700 nanometers, the visible light region of the spectrum. These video clips are from mainstream physics videos. And this theory does not change the physics that is explained so well in these videos. In quantum atom theory, only the interpretation changes, with the mathematics of quantum mechanics representing the physics of time as a geometrical process of energy exchange, with classical physics representing processes over a period of time, as in Newton's differential equations. In this theory, electromagnetism is not just holding everything together, it is forming a continuum of continuous energy exchange or continuous creation. Each photon oscillation or vibration only occurs once, forming the movement of positive and negative charge with the continuous flow of electromagnetic fields in three-dimensional space. We see this universal process as light Feel it as heat, hear it as sound, and measure it as a period of time relative to the atoms of the periodic table. The future is unfolding with each new photon-electron coupling or dipole moment relative to our actions. In such a theory, the wave-particle duality of light and matter in the form of electrons 
is forming a blank canvas that we can interact with, forming the possible into the actual. But for this theory to be correct, the photon that forms the movement of positive and negative charge has to be linked with the time dilation and space contraction of Einstein's relativity. This is explained in this first-rate video on relativity. Only a few elements can be permanent magnets. Iron is one. Copper is not. But if you pass an electric current through any metal, it becomes a magnet. An electromagnet. But how does this work? Well, strangely enough, it's a consequence of special relativity. Special relativity is the fact that in our universe, length and time aren't absolute. They're perceived differently by observers moving relative to each other, hence relativity. For example, if you measure carefully enough, you'll find that time passes slower for observers moving relative to you. Hey Derek, when did you last shave? Six hours ago. Actually, it was five hours, 59 minutes, and 59.9999999999. And moving objects are also contracted in their direction of motion. You're looking slim, only in your frame of reference. So when an object is moving relative to you, it actually takes up less space than when it's not moving. And even though this effect is obviously way tinier than we've shown, length contraction is what makes an electromagnet work. Picture a copper wire. It consists of positive metal ions swimming in a sea of free negative electrons. Now the number of protons is equal to the number of negative electrons, so overall the wire is neutral. So if there were a positive charged or positively charged cat nearby, it would experience no force from the wire at all. And even if there were a current in the wire, the electrons would just be drifting in one direction, but the density of positive and negative charges would still be the same, and so the wire would be neutral, so no force on the kitty. But what if the cat starts moving? Imagine for simplicity that the cat is moving in the same direction as the electrons with the same velocity. Well now, in my frame of reference, the wire is still neutral and so there should be no force on the cat. But consider the same situation in her frame of reference. In the cat's frame of reference, the positive charges in the wire are moving, so according to special relativity, their separation will be ever so slightly contracted. Also, from this perspective, the electrons aren't moving, so they'll be more spread out than before. Remember, objects take up more space when they're not moving than when they are. These two changes together mean there's a higher density of positive charges in the wire, so it's no longer neutral, it's positively charged, which means that the positively charged cat will feel a repulsive electric force from the wire. But in my frame of reference, this seems mysterious. There's no force on a stationary charged cat, but a moving cat is somehow repelled from this neutral wire. How do you account for that force? Well, we say it is the magnetic force. And that's mainly because a wire with current in it deflects nearby magnets. So really what this experiment shows is that a magnetic field is just an electric field viewed from a different frame of reference. In the cat's frame of reference, it is repelled from the wire due to the electric field created by the excess positive charges produced by the effects of length contraction. In my frame of reference, the cat is repelled from a neutral wire due to the magnetic field created by the current flowing in the wire. So whether you see it as an electric or a magnetic field just depends on your frame of reference, but in either case, the results are the same. So an electromagnet is an everyday example of special relativity in action. Now that might seem crazy since electrons drift through wires at about 0.00000000001% the speed of light. So how can special relativity have anything to do with it? Well, the truth is there are enough electrons in a wire and the electric interaction is so amazingly strong that even the minuscule effects of length contraction can produce significant charge imbalances that produce a noticeable force. This theory takes quantum potential, electrical potential, and gravitational potential and combines them into one universal process that explains why we have a potential future in our everyday life that is always uncertain. This is done by making the future an emergent property. Energy slows the rate that time flows, creating a future relative to the energy and momentum of each object or life form. For in this theory, creation is truly in the hand and eye of the beholder, with an objective reality in the form of a dynamic interactive process. 
that forms an infinity of possibilities. Thanks for watching. Please share and subscribe. It will help the promotion of this theory.